All right, we're going to talk about something called a perpendicular bisector. And this is something that we've covered before, so it shouldn't be too foreign to you. A perpendicular bisector is, there occurs when you have a segment and you find the midpoint of it, which that's the bisect part of perpendicular bisector. And then you draw a perpendicular line or a perpendicular segment or a perpendicular ray that goes through that midpoint. So here we have a perpendicular line going through the midpoint of our segment AB. And if we were doing a math problem, we would mark this now with our tick mark. So let us know that AM is congruent to MB. And we would also mark our angle here, which would let us know that this angle right here is a 90 degree angle, and that means that this line and this line segment are perpendicular to each other, so we have a perpendicular bisector. Now, I have a point here on this perpendicular bisector, and just like with the angle bisectors, there's something special about a point that lies on a perpendicular bisector. So, what we're going to do is measure the distance from P to A. So, from point P, a point on the perpendicular bisector, to the end point A, we measure and we find that it's 10.08 centimeters. So when I measure from P to this end point, I'm going to find that it's also the exact same distance. Remember, that's called equidistant. So this point P on the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the end points. And no matter how I move it, as long as I stay on that perpendicular bisector, it stays the same distance. I can even go all the way down to here, go all the way through it, and I still have my distance that's always the same. So, if it sounded like a theorem a second ago when I said something about the distance from a point on a perpendicular bisector equidistant, it is, and it's a theorem that you're going to need to know. It's called the perpendicular bisector theorem. So, perpendicular bisector theorem. And it says if a point is on the perpendicular bisector, so if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then that point is equidistant from the end points of the segment. Okay, so it's very similar to the one we did about angle bisectors, except it's about perpendicular bisectors. And just like the angle bisectors, this one has a converse. So it's the converse of perpendicular bisector theorem. And again, I'm not going to write that one, but as you can imagine, it's just the converse of this theorem. So if, remember we have our hypothesis, and then our conclusion. So we would say if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then the point is on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So that's the converse of the perpendicular bisector theorem. Now, probably imagine we're going to complicate this a little bit. So instead of just having one segment that's going to be having perpendicular bisectors, we're going to have three segments. And they are going to make a triangle. Each of these segments here can be bisected. And that's pretty easy to do just by finding their midpoints. So here's the midpoint of each one of these segments. I can draw a line that goes through this point and is perpendicular to this segment. And I can do it for all three sides. And I can mark my angles. So I have a... And so now I know these are perpendicular bisectors. When I have a perpendicular bisector, let's look specifically. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit so we can see better. You see that those perpendicular bisectors intersect in the same point, point P again. Now that point is called a circumcenter. Okay? And you'll see in a minute why it's called a circumcenter. But it's a center of a triangle, and it's formed by the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of the sides. Now, if you remember, a minute ago we measured from point B, point P to point B, right? 
So I'm going to go ahead and show that distance on here from point P to point B, right there. So if I move point B around, see that my distance stays there. And it's measured right here. It's 5.00 centimeters. And then you can imagine, just like a minute ago, if I measure from point B, from point P to point A, well, that's going to show up right there. And that also is 5.0 centimeters. But remember, this segment here, CB, was also bisected by a perpendicular bisector. And it also has point P on it. So if I measure from P to C, well, that's also 5.00 centimeters. So they're exactly the same distance. So that's our perpendicular bisector theorem. It tells us if there's a point on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, that point is equidistant to the endpoints of the segment. It just happens that our three segments hook together and make a triangle. But wherever I move this thing to, and however I move it, my point P is always going to stay on the intersection of those three lines, and the distance from point P to the end points of the segments, which are also the angles of the triangle, is always going to be the same. So now the difference between this one and the one we've done previously, see if you can catch what happens here. As I manipulate this triangle, Notice how that point P is not staying in the middle anymore. So what do you think is going to happen if I just continue to pull this over? Now it's right on the side. Now see if you can notice what is different about this triangle than this one that I'm doing right now. This is a triangle. All these different places I'm putting it make a triangle. But something specific happens when that circumcenter lands right on a side. What I'm hoping you see is that angle ABC, which is down here, angle ABC, this angle right here, is 90 degrees. So when our triangle is a right triangle, the circumcenter is on the hypotenuse. So that's kind of interesting. Definitely different than the one we've done already. And the last of triangle we can have. Obviously this is an acute triangle. We turn it into a right triangle. Now if we continue on, see now angle B is getting larger than 90 degrees. You notice our circumcenter goes completely outside the triangle. So that's kind of kind of different, kind of hard to get your head around sometimes. But anyways, the reason it's called a circumcenter just like the angle bisectors with the end center, these red lines right here are the radius of a circle. Now, if I drew the circle that went through this point, point A, point C, then back to point B, would it be inside this triangle or outside? Okay, so the triangle is outside. And the reason it's called a circumcenter is because this circle is circumscribed around this triangle. If you've ever heard the phrase in your geography class or in your history class, circumnavigate, that means to go around. Well, a circumcenter has a center that's in the middle of the triangle, and it goes, makes a circle around the triangle. So anyways, we're going to practice this a lot more. Write down any questions you have and bring them in. We'll talk about it tomorrow.